Come on, I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. Come on, I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. Come on, from my mother's womb, from my mother's womb, you have chosen me. You have chosen me, your love. Your love has called my name. I've been born again. I've been born again. Into your family, your blood flows. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child. God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear, when I am a child of God. Come on, let's sing it again, I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. Come on, I am surrounded, and I am surrounded by the arms of the Father, by the arms of the Father. I'm surrounded by songs. I am surrounded by songs of deliverance. We've been liberated. We've been liberated from our bondage. From our bondage. Come on, we're the sons and the daughters. We're the sons and the daughters. Let us sing. Let us sing our freedom. So I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me. You rescued me so I can stand and say, I am a child of God. Come on, you split the sea. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. Come on, leave 
behind your aggressive mistakes. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. I'm gonna bring you sorrows. Bring you sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes of you that was born, Jesus is calling. Yeah, oh, come. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought away, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before, bow down before him. For he is Lord, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought away. The precious blood of Jesus Christ will come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness. Is born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh. Father God, we believe that you have bought our salvation with your blood. And Father God, I pray that we would just place our faith and trust in that today. God, we love you. We just pray that you will just lead us and guide us. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise tonight. So it looks like, uh, so we having a little bit of difficulty. I'm seeing that some people were, is a little choppy. Is, is, is it better? Yes. Is what we're, no, it's awful. <laughs> Talk, come on, play. Talk. <laughs> Is it bad? My question is, is it bad? So we need to fix it. We'll try to fix it as best as we can. Why don't you log out? You have low bandwidth. Yeah, so we might have too much. Oh, now you got high bandwidth. Yeah, it's Zoom. Okay, hold on. Is it still choppy as I'm talking? Eh. It comes in and out. It's like one of those Asian shows. Oh. <laughs> That just means what you're going to say is super important and somebody needs to hear it tonight. Yes, I, I got a feeling that's what it is. Okay, I'm going to go turn off the internet on all of the devices really fast. So give us just a minute and we're going to do what we can. So, but as of right now, because like I said, our kids got everything going on. So hopefully we'll be able to, to get this working. But we're going to continue to talk. Here's what I want you to know about, because last week, is it better? Is it getting better? No. Yes, it's getting better. Beautiful. Okay, so here's the deal. Last week we talked about we talked about his gifts, your weapons. His gifts, your weapons. Everybody has been given a specific gift for a specific purpose in order to reach specific people. And we talked that the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural gifts in order for us to use them to bring people 
into what we would call dynamic life in Christ. But here's the deal. Not everybody has the same gift in order to fulfill that certain purpose. But here, here's the thing. God has given all of us at least five gifts, at least five gifts. And we talked about that last week. He's given us the gift of grace. He's given us the gift of influence. He's given us the gift of faith. He's given us the gift of time. And he's given us the gift of stuff. But I want to wrap up all this. I'm going to say that one more time. He's given us the gift of grace. He's given us the gift of influence. Everybody has certain people in what we would call their oikos or their, their sphere of influence. It doesn't necessarily have to be direct or immediate family, but it is people that God has placed in your circle of influence in order to impact for the kingdom purposes. So we all have grace. God has given us grace because he's given us that free gift. He's given us the gift of influence so that we can impact people. He's given us the gift of faith because he said by the measure of faith that he has given you, use it. Because faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Not that the works is a means to your salvation, but it is the outcome of your salvation. Works does not earn you forgiveness. Grace has given you forgiveness. So then what are works for? Works show evidence that I have been transformed by the power of Jesus. So I want to make sure I'm putting my faith in Jesus Christ. And time, we all have it. We all have it. But God wants you to use your time in such a way that it makes you effective for the kingdom of God. And we all have stuff. We all got stuff. Some people got a whole lot more stuff than others. But what are we doing with what God has given us? And so that's what I want to kind of talk about tonight as we start navigating through this thing called solidifying your salvation. Solidifying your salvation. I want you to know that we had an opportunity and I'm not sure if she's on here tonight and I am not going to call her out. Um, I, I just want you to know that Jess and I had an opportunity last night, last night to sit down with someone who is in this group, who has been struggling, who, who came to us, sought us out to go, listen, I'm struggling with something. Something doesn't make sense to me. I was raised Catholic, but I don't understand all of the laws in which I must follow in order to be confirmed or be saved. So what was so beautiful about that moment is I got to walk her through what the gospel says about solidifying your salvation. It's not about the works that we do. It's not about how many prayers we pray. It's not about how many things we do. It's not about going to a person. It's about going to our savior. It's not the prayer that saves you. And let me tell you something, church, especially within the Baptist church, I believe that, man, we have almost done it wrong. We have, we have led people to believe that if you pray a prayer, you are saved. Wrong answer, people. Wrong answer. Our faith and hope cannot be in our prayer. Our faith and hope has to be in Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Somebody clap for me on that, okay? It is not about a prayer. It is not about a prayer. It is not about a prayer. You tell me in scripture where it says, pray this prayer and you will be saved. It never says it in scripture. Zero, zero. But I will tell you this in Romans 10 and uh, Romans 10 verse nine, it does say, confess with your, with your mouth and believe in your heart. The prayer is just a tool in which to bring about the confession process. Okay, but the, the, the power is not in the prayer. The power is in your faith. It's in your faith that you are placing within Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, church, I believe that there are too many people in the church that believe they're saved because they prayed a prayer. Listen, if you are one of those people tonight, I pray to God that you are listening to this message tonight. And I truly believe that's why the internet is getting all jacked up because I believe Satan does not want you to hear this message tonight. But I'm telling you, you better get right or get left, okay? I'm just telling you, we need to make sure that we are solidifying our salvation in the power through faith 
in Jesus. So if you've got your Bibles tonight, if you've got your iPhones, whatever it is that you are looking at the Word of God, we are going to be going through the book of Galatians. We're going to go through chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And listen, it's just going to be verses, okay? We're not going through the whole scripture. I'm not exposit uh, ex you know, expository uh, preaching through all of these chapters, but I'm going to hit on some things tonight. I'm going to hit on some things tonight. And so what I want you to ask yourself is this, has my faith ever been tested? I'm going to rest on that for just a moment. Ask yourself this question. Has my faith, has my faith ever been tested? It's been said, it's been said, that a faith that has not been tested is not worth trusting. A faith that has not been tested, a faith that has not been tried, is not worth trusting. In other words, here's the deal. There was this lady who came to this, who came to this, um, to this famous preacher one time and said, you know what, preacher? And this isn't a preacher story, this is real life. I have never doubted my faith. I've never doubted my faith. He said, well, then I doubt you're saved. Here's the deal. This is what he meant. This is what he meant. The Bible is clear. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. This is what it means. Fear in the reverence of God, knowing that God is who he is. Trembling in the sense that I want to make sure, I want to make sure that what I believe aligns with the scriptures so that the transformation that's in my life proves evidence of whose I belong to. If you don't, if you don't start asking yourself the question, am I saved? And is there, I, I've got to be saved. How, how am I not saved? Well, I'm doing too many things, right? What you do has a tendency to get in the way of your faith. We are trying to do too much for Jesus rather than allowing God to do something in us. Come on, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Actually, I'm probably talking to me. Okay, I'm just going to talk to me. Can we just talk to each other tonight? Talk to yourself. We go, I'm going to talk to myself, okay? Here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I truly believe that we get so focused on trying to do for Jesus that we're missing out on what Jesus is trying to do in us. So sometimes we need to just stop doing. Now, listen, I'm not saying that we just always have to sit still. That's not what I mean here. What I mean is this. Examine yourself. Paul told Timothy, examine yourself to make sure that you are of the faith. What he is stating is, does what you say and what you do align with what God says? Does what you say and what you do line up with what God says? So let me take you on this. I'm going to navigate this story for just a moment. So this, this, this lady who is working through her salvation, or really, even if she's saved, she's going, help me understand how I can know what my purpose is. How can I know? Because I grew up Catholic, and I was confirmed. And then after I was confirmed, I no longer had to go to church no more. I no longer had to do anything. Really, it was just, it was just done. And she said, to me, it doesn't make sense because now I don't even have a sense of purpose. What is it that I'm supposed to do? And so here's what I did. I walked her through, in so many words, I walked her through what Galatians talks about. And in Galatians chapter two, I want you to turn to Galatians chapter two for just a moment. And I'll, I'll wait for you. In Galatians chapter two, Verse 16, Galatians chapter two, verse 16. This is what it says. Yet we know that a person, listen to me, I'm not saying this, this is Paul to the Galatians. Said, yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right 
with God by obeying the law. In other words, what she was frustrated about is she said, I'm praying prayers, I'm confessing to the priest, I'm going to mass, I'm doing these things, and yet I feel so far, far away and disconnected from God than I ever have. Why? Because the Bible is clear, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible is clear. For it is by grace, through faith, it is the gift of God, not by man, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, 8. The reason that we get so frustrated with where we are is because we are trying to do rather than rest in what has been done. Come on, somebody. We are too busy trying to do rather than rest in what has been done. And the Bible is clear. You can't work for your salvation, but you do need to work out your salvation. Come on. I didn't say you work for your salvation. You must work out your salvation. In other words, you have to make sure, is my life living in the parameters of the standard of God's word? What does God say that I must do in order to receive, earn, and solidify my salvation? Guess what? You don't earn it. You can't earn it. That's the whole point. You cannot earn it, but you sure can receive it. You sure can receive it. And that's what Paul was talking about because actually some of the Jews or in Jews, especially Peter, what was happening is when Peter had the vision of, of the plethora of food that was coming down, what he would call unclean animals, came down to him in a vision before he went and met with Cornelius, he said, God told him, listen, do not call unclean what I have redeemed. So what Jesus did was that he solidified and redeemed everything that sin broke. He was called the sacrificial lamb for a reason. He was sinless. He was perfect. He was without spot or blemish, and it took perfection in order to take away sin. So in other words, Peter, God was telling Peter, I want you to go to the Gentiles now. Gentiles are just non-Jews. That'd be us, people, okay? That's us. We are non-Jews. However, in the eyes of God, the Jews, the chosen people of God, okay, they were God's chosen people. We being non-chosen, non-Jews, God made a way by doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. I'm preaching tonight, y'all, and the spirit is just, is just coming through me, okay? I can't help it. I'm not screaming. I'm not, I'm not yelling. I'm just preaching, okay? So somebody needs to hear this because I think somebody needs to understand that your salvation is the most important thing in the entire world because guess what? Your salvation is nearer than before. My salvation is nearer than before. God is setting up to come back and get us. I'm just telling you, I'm not getting into conspiracies. I'm not getting into stuff. But if you will look at what's going on today, I'm telling you that God is preparing to come and get his children sooner than later. So I, it is my job. Listen, it is my job to make sure, listen, if you don't know anything else, you need to know that Jesus is it. <coughs> It is not your works. It is not what you think you can do. It's not about going to people. It's not going to the priest. It's not go. Listen, we have a high priest and his name is Jesus. We have a high priest and his name is Jesus. And so I want you to flip over to Galatians chapter three. Flip over to Galatians chapter three. Because I'm just solidifying the fact here, okay? I'm just solidifying the fact. And Galatians 3, verse 11, it says this. So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scripture says it is through faith that a righteous person has life. That a righteous person has life. By how? By works or by faith? Come on, somebody tell me faith. Somebody put faith in the chat for me. Come on, by faith. I need you to say it. It is through faith. 
Come on, somebody. And now flip over to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. It says this. Actually, it's going to go to Galatians chapter 5. I'm sorry. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 6. For when we place our faith in Christ, there is no benefit in being circumcised or uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. So what was happening, going back to what Peter was talking about, God gave Peter a specific vision to go to the Gentiles. But what ended up happening is Peter, when some friends came into town, started criticizing Peter for doing something that was different. And so Peter stopped eating with the Gentiles. Paul went to Peter, called that brother out and said, listen, Peter, God told us this. Why are you caring more about what people think rather than what God says? I think somebody needs to hear that tonight. I think somebody needs to hear that tonight. Stop trying to please man and please God. We, listen, there were 613 laws, 613 laws that ended up being on top of the 10 commandments that God gave Moses. There were 10 commandments that God called us to live by. And Jesus said, I'm going to sum them all up into two commands. I'm going to make life easy for you. The two commands was this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. For this fulfills the law and the prophets. Two. And you want to know what? We have hard enough time with two. But Jesus said, I came to fulfill it. I didn't come to abolish it. I came to fulfill the law. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh yet without sin. I love what Paul told the Galatians here in, in, in Galatians where he said, listen, if the law could save you, there would be no reason for Christ to have to come and redeem you. If the law could save you, there would have been no reason for Jesus to come and do what he did. So in other words, if you could keep the law then you would be working for your salvation. But guess what? You can't work for it. You can't do enough good. And God said, guess what? I'm going to do it for you. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Listen. If you are struggling with your faith tonight, I want you to know something. It's all about A, B, C. It's about the ABCs of the faith. A, we need to admit that we have sin. Has anybody told a lie? If you say no, you lying right now. Every single one of us has lied. Every, so here's the deal. Everybody on this call, I'm just flipping through. I'm flipping through everybody on this call. Guess what? Everybody's told a lie. We all liars, okay? We all liars and we got sin. So here's the deal. We're all equal in the eyes of God. So we're all sinners in the eyes of God. So this is what the scripture says. I didn't say this. Matt, Matt Lauder didn't say this. So I want you to look it up in the word of God. It's going to be in Romans, okay? For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Why did God give us the law? To show us what we really are, to show us that we are sinners and that we have fallen short. We have missed the mark. That's what sin is. We have missed the mark. And in order for us to solidify our salvation, we must first admit that we have sin. B, I must believe that Jesus is who he says he is. Check this out, y'all. As I'm walking through this, this, this process with this, with this young lady, she got to the point where she said, this makes sense. Well, that's called the Holy Spirit illuminating the word of God for you to understand it. For the natural man will not accept the things of God because the spirit of God is not in it. The message of the cross is foolishness to those whom are perishing. So you can't expect to understand the things of God if you don't have the Holy Spirit guiding you to understand the spirit of God. 
You can't understand spiritual things without being transformed by the spirit. Somebody help me. Whoo, I might just have to run down the hallway real quick because it's getting good in here, okay? You can't expect to understand the things of God if God is not leading you or guiding you through the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you something. The moment that the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you start to see clearly like you've never seen before. You realize who you really are. You are a sinner that needs grace. You're a sinner that needs grace. I need grace every day. I need Jesus every day. I have not arrived. My flesh is still battling. Can, is anybody else still battling? Anybody getting frustrated? Anybody yell this week? Anybody want to just shake their kids till their eyeballs pop out? For those of you who have kids or husbands or, husbands or wives, you know what I'm saying? Come on, somebody help me, right? Here's the deal. Yes. Just because we have Jesus doesn't mean that we're going to be free from sin and free from trials. We will, listen, until we get to heaven, we will not experience the glorification process. We won't, so we're still going to struggle. Paul even said, the things that I desire to do, those are the things that I don't do. And the things that I do, that I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. Anybody be doing some stuff you, don't, you wish you wouldn't do? You said some things you wish you shouldn't have said. Come on, man, it's called humanity. But God has saved us from it, okay? Yes, we need to repent of it. First John 1 John 1.8 tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. Somebody help me. What does all mean? In the chat feature, tell me, what does all mean? Oh. Come on, what does all mean? Oh, <laughs> that's it. Everything. All means all, and that's all all means, right? Every single thing that is past, present, and future. Past, present, and future. Everything. God took everything that we would ever do, and he placed it on his back. And let me tell you what the scripture says. It pleased God the Father to crush his son. Now, some of you would go, well, that sure is a barbaric thing to say. Like, why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the out greater, the outcome is greater than what was happening in the moment. It was going to only take a perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ to be able to solidify your way to have a relationship with the Father. And it said the moment that he said it is finished, the veil was torn from top to bottom, no longer needing there to be a mediator in between us and God. In other words, for those of you who may struggle with some of the things in Catholicism, there is no longer any reason for me to go to a pastor, to a priest, to anyone else, because my God is my priest. My God is my high priest, for we do not have a high priest that does not, does not uh, sympathize with our weakness, yet he was in all ways tempted, yet without sin. We have a high priest. I can go straight to Jesus when the glory of God is upon us because the Holy Spirit is on us and he's looking at the righteousness and the blood of Jesus upon us. He said, we may boldly enter the throne room of grace. Somebody help me. Woo! Come on, it's getting hot up in here. I'm about to turn the fans on. Let's go. Come on. God has called us, said we may boldly enter the throne room of grace. I don't got to go anywhere except for on my knees to the throne room because he hears me through the blood of Jesus. So I need to admit that I have sin. I need to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, and I need to see. I need to commit my life. I need to commit my life to Jesus. Listen. I want you to understand that your salvation experience is not for you to get fire insurance. That's not how it works. God says you either have all of me or none of me. You don't get to pick and choose like a buffet line what you choose to believe. 
You don't get to pick up what you want to pick up and put down what you want to put down. Listen, the word of God is clear. You either have all of me or you have none of me. It is not no longer about me. It is about what he says for me. I don't get to pick and choose. It is not up to me. Oh, I don't like that verse, so I'm going to throw it out. Look, Jesus put it in there because it's his written word. He breathed it into existence. And not only did he breathe it into existence, the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the Son of God. Come on. I'm telling you, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And I love what Colossians, man, I'm telling you, Spirit of God, I can't stop preaching. The word of God is just coming out. And Colossians tells us, it says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Who? Somebody better get saved or you better, you better send this recording to somebody who needs this because this stuff is good. Okay, this is the word of God. This is why it says that the word of God is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword cutting straight to the marrow, straight to the heart, because it shows you what you are, but also what you can be in Jesus. Woo! Oh my goodness, you better hold me down, Will. Will. Woo! This is good. This is so good. Somebody needs this tonight. We, what? I didn't eat or drink nothing. The Holy Spirit has just come upon me. And I'm telling you, he said boldly, he said, pray that I may speak boldly the mystery of the gospel because Romans is clear. I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power unto salvation. I'm not screaming, baby. I'm preaching. High five. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what, let them sleep. I tell you what, I pray to God that, that they're saving them right now. I pray that the Holy Spirit is anointing them right now. I'm so, whoa. Demons, get on out of my house. You, we, we in the presence of the Lord. Somebody, come on, y'all. I'm telling you, I didn't fail under the Holy Spirit. I didn't got, I'm, this is good. Baby, this is good. You got another point? I, I do. He, so here's my point. Thank you. Come on, high five. <laughs> Man, this is good, y'all. I'm telling you, this, this, this is what it's all about. This, this is why we live out our faith. This is why God has given you your gifts. This is why he's given you your stuff. This is why he's given you your platform. This is why he's given you your position. This is why he's getting you and putting you in places to make you most effective because it's all about pointing people to Jesus. It's all about bringing people to Jesus. Now listen to me, if I can just share one thing more with you, it's this. If you don't open your mouth, what's the point? For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want to know why God gave you grace? You want to know why God gave you influence? You want to know why God gave you faith? You want to know why God gave you time? You want to know why God gave you stuff? So that you could be used in an effective manner to share your faith. That's what it means to be a disciple. You have had an experience and an encounter with God that is so real and so raw and so evident that you can't help but to share it. Listen, Paul told him straight up. He said, listen, I met Jesus, and after I got a little water and I got a little bread and I got a little something in me, I had to go preach the gospel. Why? Because when you got an experience with God, you can't help but to share something with him. You can't help but to share it. Listen, I'm not saying you got to share it like me. God help you if you share it like me, okay? I'm not asking you to share it like me. I'm asking you to share it like you. Because God wants you to share it the way he's called you to share it. And he also wants you to use the stuff that he's given you in order to bless those around you. Everything is to point people to the presence of God. That's what it's about. So why did I share that story with you about this young lady? Because she gave her life to Jesus. She gave her life to Jesus. She said, this makes sense to me. No longer, I have been trying to so work and earn and, and, and try to earn my value and try to earn God's to, to look at me. And I've been missing it the whole time. I've been missing it the whole time because it's what I've been trying to do to solidify my salvation. But it's not about what I do. It's about what he did. 
And so ladies and gentlemen, I just need you to know, I need you to know that God loves you. And not only does he love you, he loves those around you. Even those who rub you the wrong way. Even those who drive you crazy. Come on, he loves them. He loves them. So you better start sharing, okay? You better start sharing, right? Come on. And if you're one of those ones, well, I don't have no crazy people around me. You the crazy, okay? I'm just saying, you the, cra you the crazy, all right? I'm the crazy. I get it. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I understand. But I promise you this. God has called us to share. Share the gospel. So what I want to end tonight with is this, okay? I want to end a little something with you real quick. This is a tool, okay? This is a tool that, that we have, you know, that, we, that you can use if you want to use it. But it's a way in which to help show somebody their need for salvation, for their need for salvation. This is called the three circles. It's called the three circles, okay? It's a tool, listen to me. This does nothing <clears throat> to save anybody. It's just showing people their need for Jesus. Remember, it's not a prayer. It's not the tools. It's faith in Jesus. And I promise you this. I do. I promise you this. If you will just open your mouth, God will use you. God will use you. So I'm going to show you something. This is called the three circles. This is called the three circles. So if you want to go ahead and take a, take a picture of that, I'm going to, if you, if you want to take a picture of that, this is what's called the three circles, okay? And basically what these three circles talk about is the first circle is about God's design, okay? The third is about brokenness, and the, th or the second is about brokenness, and the third is about the gospel. Here is what it means. It's basically this. God designed you and I in his image to have a relationship with him. God de God's design was for us to have a relationship with us. But here's what happened. Sin got in the way of our relationship, which led to brokenness in our life. And so what do we do with that brokenness? I'm telling you, we try to fill it up with all the stuff that we can do to try to earn back our relationship with God. That's what we try to do. And so we just get more crap in our life that just disconnects us from God. But here's the deal. God did not want for us to stay broken. So the gospel came. The word became flesh. The gospel came. And this was the message of God, that he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So what must we do in order to receive that? Well, guess what? We need to repent. I, I am keeping it up. Oh, okay. Here you go. Sorry. Can you get it all in? Is that, is that right? Okay. So we need to repent and believe. We need to repent and believe. Repent of what? Repent of our sin. We need to believe in Jesus. And then instead of the commit part, it says pursue. We need to pursue a relationship back to Jesus or back to God through Jesus. Does that make sense? My arm getting tired. Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. So the three circles is just a tool. It's God's design. What was God's design? Hey, you're very welcome. Sorry about that. I apologize. And if you want this, I can, I will post this picture. Here's what I'll do. I will post this picture in the group page. I'll post it in the group page. That way you have it and you can look over it. It even has some, um, some references that you can use. Listen, this is, this is a simple way of just going, hey, can I tell you what God did for me? See, this is how you start sharing your story is by demonstrating this is what God did for me. God had a design for me to have a relationship. Yes, that is correct. There is also, yes, Nicole, you are correct. There is also an app called Life on, Life on Mission that actually does it, that does it for you. I can't do it on my phone right now, but it does it for you. And it takes you through the whole thing and you can share it through the app. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. But anyway, it's just a means and an avenue for you to be able to share your faith and to share your story. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many gifts you have if you're not willing to use them. 
Come on. It doesn't matter how many gifts you have if you're not willing to use them and you're not willing to share them. God wants you to use them and he wants to equip you to be able to use them. And ladies and gentlemen, that is my job. My job is not to do it for you. My job is to equip you to do it. So many times the church thinks it's the pastor's job to do it all. My job is to equip the saints for ministry. That is what I've been called to do. And guess what God's command for you to do? Go and make disciples. We don't have to know everything to share something, but I will tell you this. You still need to open your mouth and let God use you. Let God use you. Well, pastor, I'm scared to talk. Get over it. Get over it. Because let me tell you something. God has called us to live boldly. So we need to pray for more boldness, okay? And maybe we don't even need to pray for boldness. Maybe we just need to pray for opportunities to be bold. Come on, somebody. We just need opportunities to be bold. We need opportunities to step out in faith. We need, uh-oh, I'm talking to myself now. I better stop. I better, I better quit. I'm stepping on my own toes, okay? I'm stepping on my own toes. I need to have opportunities to step out in faith. Okay, I'm preaching to myself, all right? I, there's some things I need to step out in faith with, okay? I'm just telling you, I know it. And Jess is laughing because she's about to headbutt me right now, okay? But we ain't gonna talk about that right now because I'm talking about something else. So, so here's the deal. Listen, I've got some things in my life that I'm working on. I got some things that I need to do that I believe that God is preparing us for and to do. But listen, we can't stop. We can't stop. And expect God, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We can't expect to watch God do a miracle if we're trying to make God stay inside the same box. You can't expect God to do a brand new thing if you want him to do it the same way he's always done it. You can't put new wine into old wine skins. I told you that last week. You can't do it. You can't do it. So the immediate, immediately as the wine gets into the old wine skin, as the wine, as the wine starts to ferment and starts to get real good, it starts busting the bags and then you waste everything. So I'm going to ask you tonight, what are you wasting tonight? What is God telling you that you are wasting tonight? Somebody go, somebody help me in the chat. What do you believe that God may be telling you that you should do that you aren't doing? Or, or let me rephrase it. Let me, let me put it this way. What should you be doing that you're not doing? Or what are you not doing that you should be doing? What is God saying to you? What, what should you be doing that you're not? Or what are you doing that you should not be? Come on, sharing my story. That's a good one. Come on, somebody else. Somebody else. What, what are you not doing? Come on, talk to me. Somebody help me. What are some things that you ain't doing that you should be doing? I love that. Planting seeds, I hear you. Wasting time, I could be teaching my kids the word, trusting more, sharing the gospel. Come on, somebody else. Spending time in the word every day. That's good. That's good. Wow, that's a good one. Forgiving. Completely forgiving. Wow. Wow. Well, man, I'm telling you what, I'm praying the power of God over that. I'm praying, because I'm going to tell you what, that's hard. That's hard. Sharing with people who have rejected the word for years. I hear you, Kristen. Reading my Bible more. I hear you, Michelle. Can I tell you what, man? I, I think that's probably one of the hardest things as believers is, is truly forgiving the way God has called us to forgive, the way he is the way he has forgiven us. Because this is what gets me. Come on, for some of us who are married, and even, you know, even for those who aren't married, okay? This is what it says. Love keeps no records of wrong. For I have cast your sin as far as the east is from the west. 
Man, that's hard, y'all. That's hard. When people have done you wrong, when people have allowed abuse to happen to you, when you have been their abuse, when they have chosen to replace you ra rather than receive you. Look, man, I could go on and on and on. This is my story, okay? This is my story. There's a lot of things that have happened that most people don't understand. And there are people, uh, and, and I've gotta be very careful because there are people on this call that some of this stuff affects. And, and so I'm, I'm very cautious in how I share it because I do wanna be respectful, but at the same time, just know that, listen, you ain't gonna throw much at me that I have not experienced in my life. You, you, you're not gonna throw something by me that's gonna be like, ooh, I didn't see that coming. Because I believe that God has allowed a lot of things to happen in my life so that I could become all things to all people that I may save some. Come on, that's what Paul tells us, tells us. Become. He said, to a Jew, I became a Jew. He said, to, to, to a Gentile, I became a Gentile. To a barbarian, a barbarian. To a Greek, a Greek. I learned how to become all things to all people that I may save some. Listen, ladies and gentlemen on this call, he's calling you to become all things to all people that you may save some. He said, I have come to persuade men. And why has he used that word persuade? I love this because I'm going to wrap it up with this. Be I persuade because I am convinced. I'm persuading because I am convinced that what I believe is absolutely true. So here's the deal. If you're not sold on it, you ain't gonna sell it. So that's why you need to make sure that you are solidified in your salvation. Because when you understand on how much you have been forgiven, those who have been forgiven much will love much. And you can't help but to dance in the presence of God. Come on, somebody. Come on. So you have to ask yourself, if I'm not experiencing the passion of God, if I'm not experiencing the, the, the overflow of the power of the Holy Spirit, I must ask myself, how much am I getting into the presence of God? How much of his word am I getting in me? And how much of his word am I getting out of me? So that I can bring people to the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, church, I'm telling you, I have to preach the gospel. I've got to, listen, I can't, I can't not preach the gospel. I believe I'm most satisfied when I am worshiping in my design. I believe you will be most satisfied in your purpose when you are worshiping in your design. Well, pastor, what do you mean worshiping in my design? When you start living like you have been set free. When you start living like you believe it, it don't matter what nobody else thinks. It don't matter what nobody else says. You're not going to put me in a box. You're not going to put my God in a box. You're not going to make me dress a certain way. You're not going to make me speak a certain way. You're not going to make me look a certain way because I am most satisfied because I am in my design. Come on. Again, I'm not saying that I'm not going to become all things to all people. No, but when I am comfortable in my own skin, when I can no longer have to wear, wear Saul's armor and just go out with my sling and my stone, knowing that I'm under the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, guess what? I got nothing to fear. I've got nothing to fear. So why do I leave it with nothing to fear? Because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So if I'm not given a spirit of fear, what Satan wants to do is make you fearful so it renders you ineffective so that you will no longer speak the word of God. But I'm telling you, in your life today, I want you to punch Satan in the mouth and say, guess what? My God has set me free. I am no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go bring some people to Jesus. And all God's people said, A to the man, okay? A to the man. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise tonight? Can we just give him a hand clap of praise? If, if I'm speaking to you tonight, can you just say you speaking to me? Come on, can you just tell me in the chat you speaking to me tonight? Come on, you speaking to me tonight. Come on, somebody help me. I just need to know I'm speaking to somebody tonight other than me and Jess. You speaking to me, okay? So here's the deal. I just want you to know that we are so thankful for you all. So tonight, the purpose of tonight is knowing and solidifying my salvation. 
Jesus said this, Jesus said this, once you are in my hand, there is nothing that can snatch you out. If you, listen to me, I'm talking about mustard seed faith. I didn't say you had to have faith of a mountain. He said faith of a mustard seed. And he said, I will do the rest. I'll do the rest. Just a little bit of faith. And what did the man say? Do you believe that I can do this? I believe, but help me with my unbelief. In the depths of my soul where I doubt, help me believe. So I want to encourage you this week, encourage you this week, look for opportunities to be bold. Look for opportunities to share your faith and look for opportunities to use your gifts. Did you say what C stands for? Commit. C was commit. So A, admit. B, believe. C, commit. Okay? C, commit. And I just want you to understand that he loves you and that he is for you. He is not against you. He is for you, not against you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And again, he throws your sin as far as the East is from the West. So I want you to take some of these points tonight. I want you to listen and I want you to saturate on it and I want you to share it. Saturate on it and share it. Say saturate and share. Come on, saturate, share. Come on, somebody, saturate and share. That's your job this week. Saturate and share. And let's have some more stories next, well, I'll tell you what, next week, next week the following week. Next week, we will not meet next week, okay? We will not meet next week. I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. But listen to me. Mama and me and the, and the babies, we got to get out of town and have some vacation time <laughs> before mama kills me, okay? I'm just telling you. We need to have some, just we, we have to have the great divide. And we just need to get away, have a little family time. Just know that we're going to stay in the loop with, with the group. And we're not going to just like not talk to you and all that good stuff. We're going to still talk. But we're just not going to meet next week because let me tell you something. I will not lose my family over ministry. I will not lose. I will quit ministry before I lose my family. For my family is my first ministry. So I'm telling you, I have got to get away so that I can just rejuvenate my time with my family so that I can disciple my family and just be a kid myself. Okay. I just need a little bit of rest. Okay. And so we will not meet next week, but we will pick it up the following week. So I'm going to pray for you. And then uh, again, I will make sure to post the uh, three circles picture in the group page. So if you want to look over that and have a reference to use to use it, I'll do it that way. But also, Life on Mission app, you can download it. It's free. And then it'll also just kind of walk you through. You just swipe, swipe right. No, swipe left. Swipe left. Wh whatever. It doesn't matter. Just start swiping and you'll figure it out, okay? <laughs> I ain't worried about it. Whether it's left or right, just swipe, okay? So anyway, I'm going to pray for you, and then we will wrap up. Daddy, we love you. God, I'm just so thankful that you have given us the word of God and that you became the word. That Father God, we beheld the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And God, you are truth. You said you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. God, that is specific in the sense that God, we must rest fully in you. Not a prayer, not anything else, just you. So God, if there's anybody on here tonight that needs to solidify that, I pray that they would do it tonight, that they would do it tonight and they would let us know so that we can celebrate with them and that God, you can let them know that you are rejoicing in heaven because you said that the angels in the presence of God rejoice, right? Over one lost sheep who come to repentance. And Father God, that's what we ask tonight. God, we love you. We are grateful. And all God's people said, amen and amen. If you have any prayer requests, make sure to put those in the group.